Before I start my talk, I do a few things I'd like to get off my chest. You know, clear the air, as they say. <laughs> hey, you, you, that way you can identify the body, don't worry. Um, do you know, in this room, there are many hyper-preterists. In this room, there are some who we'd say worship the Virgin Mary. And look at me. I'm like seven feet seven tall up here. There's just enough truth in what I've said to be true Lashon Hara. You'll find out. There is much to un unpack in what I've touched on, but I'm going to tell you an English version of an old Yiddish story titled The Pillow Full of Feathers. In a small town somewhere in Eastern Europe lived a nice man with a very nasty problem. He liked to talk too much about other people. He could not help himself. Whenever he heard a story about someone he knew or sometimes about somebody he didn't even know, he just had to tell his friends. Since he was in business, he heard quite a lot of rumors and stories out there. He loved the attention he got and was delighted when they laughed the way he told his anecdotes. Sometimes he'd even embellish them with little details that he invented to make them funnier, a little juicier. Other than that, he was really a pleasant, good-hearted man. You'd like him. He knew, of course, it was kind of wrong, but it was too tempting. And in any case, most of what he said, like I did, really happened, didn't it? It had truth. Many of the stories were simply very innocent, weren't they? One day, he found out something truly weird but true, about another businessman in town. Of course, he felt compelled to share what he knew with his colleagues, who of course told it to their friends, who told it to all the people that they knew, who told it to their wives, who spoke with their friends and their neighbors. It went all around town, this was not a big town, till the unhappy businessman, who was the main character of this story, heard it. Of course, he had been hearing rumors of it for a while. He ran to the rabbi in, in the town and wailed and complained that his reputation had gone with the wind. He had none, no reputation any longer. The rabbi, of course, knew many of the customers, so, he, so, so, to, so to speak, he decided to summon the man who loved to tell stories. He didn't know, but of course, this was the man who started it, but if not, at least he might know who actually started the stories. When the nice man with the nasty problem heard from the rabbi how devastated his fellow businessman was, he truly felt sorry. He honestly had not considered it such a big deal to tell these stories because they all had some truth. The rabbi could check it out if he wanted to. The rabbi just sighed, truly. True, not true, it makes no difference. You cannot just tell stories about people this is lashon hara, slander. It's like murder. You kill a person's reputation. He said a lot more, and the man who started the rumor now felt really bad, and he was truly sorry. What can I do to make it undone? He sobbed and said, I'll do anything you say. The rabbi looked at him. Do you have any feather pillows in your house? Rabbi, I am not a poor man. I have a bunch of them. But what do you want me to do, sell them? No, just bring me one. One feather pillow. The man was mystified. He returned a bit later to the rabbi's study with a nice fluffy feather pillow tucked under his arm. The rabbi opened the window and handed him a knife and said, sir, cut the pillow open, dump the feathers on my floor. But Rabbi, here in your study, this will make such a mess. The Rabbi said, do as I say. So he <laughs> tore open the pillow. The man cut the pillow thoroughly. Feathers came out. <laughs> they landed. Sorry, Vicky. <laughs> They landed on the chair, they landed on the bookcase, they landed on the clock, on the cat who then jumped after them. 
They floated over the table into the teacups. The rabbi just sat back and groaned. The man looked about, saw as the window, the open window launched a trail of feathers off to who knows where. The rabbi waited a few more minutes and then ordered the man, now we have a solution. Bring me back all the feathers. Stuff them back in your pillow. The empty pillowcase. The man looked at him in disbelief and said, Rabbi, that's impossible. The ones right here in the room, maybe. I might get most of them, but the ones that flew out the window, they're simply gone. Rabbi, I can't do it. You know that. Yes, said the rabbi, and he nodded gravely. That is how it is. Once a rumor, a gossipy story, a secret leaves your mouth. You do not know where it will end up. It flies on the wings of the wind, and you can never, never get it back. He ordered the man to deeply apologize to the person about whom he had spread the rumor. That's difficult and painful, he knew, but it was the least he, he knew he could do. He ordered him to apologize to the people to whom he had told the story, each and every one. He made them accomplices, accomplices in the nasty Lassen Hara game. He ordered him to go off and diligently study the laws and their deep on Lassen Hara every day for a year and come back to him at the end of that time. That's what the man did. Not only did he study about Lassen Hara, he talked about the importance of guarding your tongue to all his friends and colleagues. And in the end, he became a nice person who had overcome a nasty problem. We're here today considering how damaging rumors and gossip can certainly be. This is hardly a new situation. In scripture, we saw the first mention of the serpent who offered the fruit of the tree with full assurance against harm. Genesis 3, 4 through 5. You will certainly not die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God. You will know good from evil. There was truth in what he said. She did not die then, and her eyes were in fact opened. The year 1000, January 1st, Pope Sylvester II, the end of the world is predicted. Wait, wait, reset, January 1, 1033, or 1000 years after Jesus' death, instead of his birth. Of course, if you look back into history, tremendous societal upheaval. It was a mess. Many people lost all their, their possessions. Many people lost their lives. What's up next is the foundation for the Hebrew thought that I've just mentioned on the last Lassen Hara. Leviticus 19.16. You must not go around spreading false stories about other people. Don't do anything that would put your neighbor's life in danger. The rabbis clearly recognized that this passage equated rumors and gossip with murder. Ruination of a reputation can kill a person all but the grave. Sometimes even that. 1750, King Louis XV was kidnapping children so that he could bathe in their blood to cure what everybody knew. He had leprosy. He didn't. Parents rioted in the streets. Lies were lost. The truth was policemen had been paid per arrest to clear vagrants off the street. That unaccompanied child got locked up. All the kids went home. Romans 129, we are filled with all manner of evil, covetousness, malice. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice. They're all gossips. January 24th, 2018, just a bit ago, Pope Francis speaks out against fake news. Going back to the Garden of Eden, saying we need to unmask what will be called snake tactics used by those who disguise themselves in order to strike at any time in any place. As I was working on this talk not that long ago, I was offered a few names and stories about the evil gossip and those who were spreading it. I was tempted, but I'll tell you now, in, in those same Christian circles, 
we're guilty of gossip. We're we're guilty of, of storytelling. I've had I've I've had many in this room's full attention, sparking years with stories of fellow Christians, with stories denigrating those fellow Christians and others outside the faith. It's just as evil. That would be gossip, though rumor mongering, hasin uh, hara. I'm back to where I started. That hyper-preterist label I mentioned a few minutes ago, clearly only a way to drag a person down who you should actually be talking to. Hey, I love hiking and mountaineering. I guess I'm a hyper-hiker. I couldn't resist that. <laughs> Those Mary-worshipping Catholics, well, not exactly. Catholics, like all Christians, are called to honor Mary, not to worship her. Oh, me and the seven feet seven tall. Well, if you count those three steps, add that to my height over your, seven feet seven. It's no rumor, I'm done, and I thank you very much. Sorry, Vicki.